Today's video, we'll be looking at this Dell Optiplex GX110 desktop form factor. We review old technology from games to old PCs and don't forget the dog. We don't forget ancient electronics. We cover it all. So, longtime viewers of this channel may remember something similar. Very, very long time ago in the early days of my channel, I believe I did a review of a Dell Optiplex GX110 in the small form factor. So this is more or less the same machine, but it's in a, a full desktop factor. It's probably a little bit expandable, um, but we're going to take a look at it because, hey, I have it and it's here, so why not? So a lot of times when I do my videos, uh, I have maybe already been through a machine or I've already upgraded and things like that. Um, this one I have not done anything to other than opened up and checked the video card to see if it was anything spectacular. As far as I could tell, it, it isn't. I, I suspect it's just maybe like a, a TNT uh, card of some sort. Um, but other than that, I haven't done anything. It still has. It's complete with weird stains and it looks like a coffee mug stain here on the top. So, this is going to be, uh, I thought that would spice up the video a little bit, uh, going through, who knows what we'll discover. Maybe there's a scorpion uh, still hiding inside this case. Uh, I'm not sure what the hard drive is in here, but uh, if it does have a hard drive, I haven't even tried booting it up. So, maybe we'll get uh, flames and sparks out of it, and maybe we'll find some spicy content on the hard drive. Who knows? Uh, but, probably not. It's probably sitting in some business somewhere and they were using it to uh, rest coffee on top of it apparently. Getting down to the nitty-gritty of it, uh, I believe this thing was released probably in around the year 2000. From the label here it's a Pentium 3 machine. I don't recall if it's a slot 1 or a socket 370, we'll see. Uh, it's probably This could have had XP, Windows 98, Windows 2000, who knows. We get a reset, I believe that's the reset, and that's the power button. Looks like a little grill here, although I don't know if that's an actual... I don't think those are actual holes, I think that's just for style. Then <laughs> Hard drive activity light, you get the power LED in the actual power button. Uh, this We have a spot uh, for a floppy drive, looks like a, a three and a half inch floppy drive, obviously. Uh, I don't really care for these cases where it's like the it's molded in where you're supposed to put the floppy drive. Uh, I, I like having the freedom of, of being able to put whatever in that drive spot. I don't really like when it's molded like that uh, form factor to it, but hey, it works. You can probably still put a zip drive in there or something. And of course down here we have a five and a quarter inch bay, and right now there is a, looks just like a regular CD-ROM drive. Again, no idea if it works, but yeah, it looks like we just have a generic CD-ROM drive. Let me flip it around and take a look on the back. So here is the back of our Optiplex, and now I've just realized it's not quite shut correctly. Uh, these things have kind of like little buttons here and on this side that you kind of press in and then you can pull the top off. Very easy to open, but they can be a little bit of a chore to get them back on like correctly uh, and fitting nice and snug. Parallel port, one serial port right here. We have two PS2 ports for keyboard and mouse. Ah, we have another serial port here. It's slightly unusual. It's a little weird. Usually when you have two serial ports, they're next to each other, so a little strange. Two USB right here. Uh, I'm not sure if that's 2.0. It's probably uh, like 1.2 or something like that. Built-in video. Do not know what the built-in video for this machine is. I'm guessing it's generic. Um, what do we have here? Looks like an Ethernet port, and then we have built-in sound. So, we have microphone, and then line in and out. Uh, looks like, and then here we have one, two, three expansion uh, bays, and one has a video card that is still uh, unknown to me. I just wanted to peek at it uh, when I opened this up. I just want to make sure it wasn't like a Voodoo 3 or something. 
Uh, so that would be nice, but no, I think it's just something generic. We'll, we'll take a better look at that. Uh, so, uh, let's, uh, open this guy up. Before I open up, we can take a better look at that little, uh, looks like a, like a mug or a coffee stain or something right there from the previous owner. Here are those little, uh, button tabs I was talking about. You press these in on each side, and then you pull, and the case lifts up. We got a little refurbished sticker. So maybe at some point this was refurbished, uh, possibly by Dell. And it looks like maybe this had Windows 2000 Professional on it, which makes sense because it seems like this was probably in some kind of office or business environment. Okay, so I did decide to clean it up. I took a wipe to it. It's not perfect, but we got most of the uh, most egregious uh, like stains and marks off it. So at least it looks semi-presentable now. And I also noticed there's some discoloration right here where it looks like there was a bigger kind of sticker. Uh, maybe it was one of those Best Buy uh, Year 2000 warning stickers or something. It looks big enough. It's like it was a big sticker. Um, it was probably like whatever the company was or some kind of like inventory number sticker or something like that would be my guess. Um, Alright, so let's open this guy up. And here we are inside the machine. It looks it looks more or less like the the small form factor version. It's just got a lot more like space to work with here. Not that they seem to be doing much with it. This is just a big lot of nothing except there is a hard drive in here. Was like a, a 20 gigabyte Western Digital hard drive. That might even be. It's probably the same uh, motherboard that's in the small form factor one. It's quite a small motherboard. Pentium 3 looks like socket 370. Um, if I recall, this you pull this tab and this lifts up uh, where you put the expansion cards. It looks like the same thing. It's just three PCI slots, so that's unfortunate. No AGP and um, no 16-bit ISA, so that hampers its abilities a little bit as like a DOS machine uh, or even like a Windows XP uh, gaming rig or even 98 really uh, without that. AGP slot hinders it a little bit. Yeah, I think you could still make a decent like You could make a decent Windows 9x machine out of this. You could even make an okay um, DOS build with this. It's just you're gonna have a little bit of issues with the sound card But there are some half decent PCI cards that work pretty well in in DOS. So it's not a deal breaker uh, Well at least not for some people. It's right. It's a deal breaker for people like me but it's not necessarily a deal breaker for Everyone, I think we have the 810 chipset, uh, so I think that might have integrated video. Uh, let me, I have no idea what speed this CPU is, um, so now I think we just do this and then, yep, that lifts right out. And there's a 3Com chip, I think that's probably for the Ethernet, I'm guessing. Uh, don't see much else. Uh, so yeah, not a whole lot. We got the CMOS battery there. Memory, just two, uh, two slots for memory. No idea how much is currently installed. Caps look okay. I mean, there's some dust, but I don't see, you know, like corrosion or anything like that. This card, I have no idea what it is at a glance. I do not know what it is at a glance, but it could be something like a TNT of some sort, or like a GeForce 2 MX, maybe, or something. Something like that. I don't know. Let's let's put it all back in, and let's see if it will, uh, we'll see if it boots up, and maybe all our questions will be answered if it boots into an OS. So if you don't have a discrete graphics card, um, the built-in graphics is just... Intel's like integrated 3D graphics. Uh, it's integrated into the chipset. Uh, not great. Uh, not great for gaming. <laughs> it, will, it will do in a pinch if you just want to do spreadsheets or you know if you want to check out the internet at the time. Um, but for gaming, uh, probably not a great option. The integrated sound. I can't find a specific chip. I was expecting to maybe find some kind of real tech or C media or something like that but I I don't I would think the sound was like its own chip um I don't know it's hard to see maybe 
Maybe that's it. It's a little hard to see. Um, yeah, I think that's it, because if we look... Do, 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 it's not going to focus. So I, th I think this is the sound chip, because the little play icon there. I can't really see here um, who it is. It, get, it gets blurry before I can see, but yeah, I think that's the sound chip right there, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, you know, it's integrated. It, it probably works. It's probably like nothing to write home about, though. Uh, I'm guessing there's probably like no advanced features like EAX or things like that, but um, again, it is their basic sound. I disconnected these cables, so maybe we'll get a better look. It looks like it has maybe like 300 and some odd megabytes of memory. Got a little piezo speaker, and looks like a proprietary-ish power connector. It's this little like auxiliary connector. It's It wouldn't surprise me if this was, yeah, it's Dell. It would not surprise me if that's proprietary. Looks proprietary. Anyways, uh, let me connect everything back up and put the top back on, and we'll see if it boots. All right, so I have it all hooked up to this monitor. This is like a little budget I think a 13 or 14 inch monitor, PACCOM, never heard of them before. Uh, it's it's kind of a crappy monitor, but it's small and light and easy to move around, so, uh, and it works, I think. So, okay, so uh, let me turn the light off here, uh, and then let's hit power and um, see if it powers on. All right, there's some, okay. Ah, TNT2 Model 64. So, yeah, as, as I suspected, I, I thought it might be some kind of a TNT uh, card. Um, yeah, I expected that too. So, yeah, the battery, the CMOS battery is obviously dead. Uh, so, yeah, it looks like the CMOS battery is probably dead. I kind of expected that. So we get an invalid configuration. So it just wants me to... Uh, configure things in the BIOS, and uh, then we'll see if it will boot into an OS. Let's run the setup utility. So yeah, this very... Okay, well, oh, that's interesting. So we get um, Intel Pentium 3 at 933, 933 megahertz. Pentium 3. Um, I actually don't have a lot of speedy, uh, you know, socket 370 Pentium 3, so that's, that's nice. 933 megahertz. Uh, not too much else of interest here. Uh, it looks looks like a pretty yeah, it's a pretty limited, uh, pretty limited bio. So I'm just gonna set things up like a minimal setup, and then we'll see if it goes into the uh, an OS. Alert! Cover was previously removed. <laughs> thank thank you for the warning. Um, okay, Windows XP. So, yeah, it should be able to run uh, Windows XP fine for business tasks. Although, now that I'm looking at this desktop, this was definitely not used just for business tasks. So, um, this is my first time looking at this desktop as well. So, let's see what we can spot here. We got World of Warcraft, um, Diablo 2, uh, Yahoo Messenger. Uh, Walmart, they got Walmart, a shortcut to Walmart.com. Uh, Diablo 2 Lord of Destruction, they like Diablo too. They even got the expansion. So, okay, interesting. Maybe this, this, now that I'm looking at this, this looks like it may have been, uh, definitely may have been like in a home rather than a business. Maybe it wasn't a business and then it went to a home, but yeah, they definitely did some gaming on this machine, so... That's interesting. So I'm going to poke around a little bit more and uh, see what I can see. So it does appear the CD drive works. It's it, very noisy, but it works. So I just wanted to see if it would um, run a CD, which it did. Now let me test the floppy drive. That disk is good, so it should read it. Let me see if anything comes up. Uh, the disk in drive A is not formatted. That is not correct. It is, and it's working fine. So, uh, looks like, looks like the CD drive works. Little noisy, but it works. 
and it looks like the floppy drive does not work, which uh, honestly I kind of expected. Other than that, guys, I can't stress this enough. If you're getting rid of a computer, get rid of your personal information. I mean, it's real funny when we find, you know, when there's naughty stuff on there, find from other people, haha, ha, look at them. But like, these people left their tax information on here. So lucky for them, I'm not like a scoundrel or a scallywag or anything, but, you know, people can do, probably do like identity theft stuff, so, again, I have to stress, if you are getting rid of a personal computer, either pull the hard drive or reformat it before you get rid of it, because, uh, you know, there's people out there that will take advantage of that information. So, uh, what I'm going to do now, uh, I'm just going to reformat this. I don't think I'm going to bother to replace the floppy drive because I'm kind of running down on my supply of floppy drives so I'm probably not going to replace the floppy drive but I'll probably install like Windows 98 on this thing and um, just maybe basically leave it as it is. Maybe max the RAM and maybe uh, once that's done we'll take another quick look at it. I'll play a game or two maybe quickly and then uh, we'll wrap it up. Okay so a few things. First of all, even though I said I was going to install Windows 98, I couldn't seem to be able to. I tried two different official retail Windows 98 second edition discs, and every time I would try to install it or run them, it would say no system disk found, or it was not a system disk. You know, I was also thinking, you know, Windows 2000 is also like a plausible OS. Uh, that would have been on this machine. So I put in my Windows 2000 Professional CD and it worked just fine. No issues. So I don't know why this particular machine did not want to install Windows 98. I, I thought maybe there was a chance it was some weird Dell thing like in the BIOS it, it wasn't allowing like they for some reason they wouldn't allow you to install Windows 98. Um, but I don't know that's kind of weird. I don't think that's the case. Uh, so, and I don't remember having issues in my, the other Optiplex I've had or, or heard of issues where it doesn't allow you to install Windows 98. So, I don't know, I just chalked it up to a fluke with this specific machine. So I installed Windows 2000. It's actually been working just fine, pretty zippy. And I just installed the NVIDIA uh, video drivers for the TNT, uh, what, M64 card in there, the TNT2. And now it consistently locks up on starting up. It gets to about right over the S in Microsoft, and then it just locks up, and it flashes for a second, and the graphics go up. So I, I, I'm pretty confident it's some kind of stupid issue with the graphics driver, even though I got the driver specifically from Dell's website for this machine. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. Um... I want to be completely honest with you guys. Now, usually at this point, I would go back. I would try to install the drivers again. Um, if that didn't work, you know, I'd try different drivers. I'd update this. I'd update that. I would try a different video card just to get it running. Um, I'm just not really interested at this point. Uh, like I said, I've done a video on a very similar machine to this, except it was in the small form factor. And so the question is, do I want to dedicate the next X how many hours uh, just trying to get this machine up and running? And um, I, to be honest, I'm just not really interested at this point. So uh, I think I'm going to put this project on the back burner. Uh, I, I have a lot of computers that kind of fill the niche that this machine would fill. So I, I'm going to not proceed any further with this project. I'm probably going to pass this machine off to a friend that, that has more time to uh, mess around with it. So sorry about that. That we got to end this one a little bit short. But uh, I will give my I'm going to give my thoughts on this machine uh, overall of them. I, I'm pretty sure the issues they're having I'm having are, are specifically to this machine. I'm going to try not to uh, be biased to the whole. Optiplex series, and I'll kind of give my thoughts on this machine as if it was working without issues. Actually, I think this TNT2 card was a factory option. I believe it was an option to get this card uh, straight from Dell when you got this machine. So this might be, you know, like stock uh, card, actually. Okay, so 
I feel a little bad giving up on this thing so early into the project, but like I said, I've, I've got a lot of projects and I just don't have time to chase around drivers and, and certain things. I was hoping this would be uh, kind of an easy situation with this getting it up and running, but floppy drive doesn't work, it's being picky about the OS, it's being picky about drivers, and I just have other projects I need to move on to. But I will make this promise to you. I have a similar sort of Pentium 3 machine that I'm going to do a video on very soon. It's a little more, little more interesting. It's a Compact Desk Pro. And I promise I will get that thing working even if it comes up against... Uh, or even if I come with, uh, it comes with issues. I will put some more effort into that machine. I find it a little bit more interesting than this guy here. So... Uh, I'll probably regret saying that, but that's that's my promise to you guys. <laughs> Maybe we'll see what's re depending on how much trouble it gives. I'll try. I'll try. Um, but anyways, what do I think about this? Let's just assume that it was working and I didn't uh, have issues because I think the issues are just maybe with this specific machine or. Uh, maybe it's just time issues. I just don't feel like hunting, you know, out drivers and stuff that aren't going to give me issues at this point. Um, overall, I do like the Optiplex GX110. I like the design. I like the desktop design. Of course, could use a little bit more expansion here, but it is a smaller desktop form factor. And this is really good for those individuals that want to use real hardware, but maybe they have space issues. Uh, this does not really take up too much space. You get this, you put a little CRT on top of it, stick it in the corner, and you have a half-decent uh, retro setup, uh, at least for Windows 9X and maybe early XP if this is all you have. Very easy to get into, pretty easy to work with. The PCI slots only in there really kind of limited uh, for, you know, like high-end gaming uh, and DOS gaming uh, without the ISA or AGP. Um, AGP more for like high-end stuff and ISA if you want to do DOS gaming but with the appropriate cards throw in a sound blaster or, um, a vortex card that are decent PCI cards for DOS you know maybe throw in a PCI Voodoo 3 if you have one and it, it would make a quite a capable um, DOS and Windows machine uh, not optimal but it can be made to be quite capable um, other than that, yeah, it's, a, it's an okay machine, especially for someone that's, that's hurting for space. And they aren't that hard to come across. You can find these uh, fairly easily. And it seems to be fairly easy to upgrade. So, not optimal, but it, it works. Uh, so, uh, what are your guys' experiences with the Dell Optiplex GX10? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.